And guess what? Today we're going to speak about what is it worth to you to have more money? Part two. Hopefully last time you took a few moments and you actually did the exercise that I suggested. And what I suggested that you do is write down all of the true feelings you have about money. Now, sometimes this can be really hard because we have to look deep to be honest with ourselves because usually our conscious mind will say, oh yes, I love money, I want money. But when we start digging deeper, we notice that we have feelings like, well, money is, you know, those that simple saying they always say is, money is the root of all evil. People that have a lot of money, they are not really kind. Everybody is selfish that has a lot of money. Whatever it is, there's usually something underneath there. And if you remember that money has everything to do with how you think, how you feel, and the programs and the beliefs that you have, then you start to be in a position where you can do something different about your money conversation. Because if you don't have that awareness, you're not going to be able to do anything about it. So look inside and see what's your pattern. Do you take things to the very end until you're almost out of money and then somehow you just miraculously create some more? Or do you feel like you need a really big buffer? Do you need a whole bunch of things saved and feel really secure about that? And I, I spoke about this last time that I know many millionaires and billionaires and quite a few of them actually feel like they don't have very much money, even though they may have a million dollars in cash or they may have 15,000, I'm sorry, 15 million dollars stored up in their, their, 401ks or wherever it is, their real estate. And many people have literally billions of dollars and they still don't feel full. They don't feel satisfied. They don't feel abundant. And they're always afraid that they're going to lose it or they're not going to make the next deal. Now, I'm not saying everyone is like this. I'm just saying that I know people personally that feel that way. They've got some programs running. So what are your programs? What are your patterns? It's very important for you to know whether you really respect and love money or whether you're afraid of it or you're afraid it's going to be gone or you don't have really nice feelings about it because remember your energy is creating what you think about and what you think about is creating your energy and all of it is creating your life. So if your money isn't exactly where it's at, a little work would be a good thing. One of the things that I've learned recently about manifesting is commitment is absolutely critical. And I don't mean just like sort of, I mean how passionate I feel about what I want is exactly the level and the degree that I am going to receive something back. So you may think you have a commitment, but if you have things underneath that are really patterns and beliefs and programs that are keeping you just a little bit iffy about your commitment, then understand that your manifesting capability will be just a little bit off because it's like for like out there in the world. So there's some keys that are very important for you to think about when you're manifesting. One of them is awareness. I speak about that all the time because awareness is the key. It's very important. The second thing is to know your blocks, know what your programs are. Notice what it is that you feel about receiving, not just money, but how well do you receive other places in your life? Do you allow people to support you and what it is you need help with? Do you have a difficult time asking people to come over and help you move or just help you with anything that you might need some support with? It's very important to recognize your receivership capabilities because this personally has been my big thing. I'm really good at giving, giving, giving. I haven't been so great at receiving. It's anybody who knows me knows that that's been a thing of mine. Although I am definitely changing that because I'm receiving a whole lot more than I ever have in my life, especially at this point in my life. And I'm very grateful for that. And I have really looked into the very things that I'm suggesting to you because they work. The other thing that's important is to recognize the stories that you tell yourself. What stories do you tell yourself about money? 
this must be my day of confession or something. I have to tell you that for me, what I have done is I project. I take my story and I project it on other people. And one of the ones that I've done in the past really well is, well, I know they don't really have a lot of money and I know they're on a fixed income or I know they have this or they had a problem or they just got divorced or they're, you know, got stuff. They've got a big loan they have to pay back. And what happens for me in the past is that I would then go over into their world and decide that, gosh, they couldn't really afford this program or that's going to be really hard for them. And so what do I do? I stop holding the focus of the value of who I am and what I offer. Now, have you ever done that? And whether it's with business or whether it's just just being in your life and, and recognizing the value that you provide to your family, to your friends, to your children, perhaps at your work or many, many other places in society that you are a giving person, but where is it that you have projected things on people and think, oh, they're not going to like this. They don't really deserve it or they don't really, I don't really think they're going to do it the way I think they ought to. The bottom line is projection. Big deal. It's a big deal for so many people. And those are, those thoughts are completely related to the ideas and the stories that you tell yourself because you tell, take those stories and you project them out on other people. Another thing is that you have to know what beliefs you're going to have to give up. So when you know your stories and, excuse me, and you know what it is that's in the way of your receivership, then you have a real heads up. You have a real step up towards being able to shift those things. And that's what's really important. So my invitation to you, another exercise, is to write down what it is that your stories are about. Write down what it is that you have fear about with money. Write down the conversations and perhaps you'll want to reiterate some of the things that you wrote yesterday if you'd already done that. And add to that list these things. And then what I'd like you to do is cover it completely and look at that and say to yourself as you look at that list, I choose differently. And then you take that paper and you find a safe place, like a hole in the backyard or something, and you burn it. Don't burn it in a trash can where there's other trash, please. But definitely put yourself in a position where you burn it and you watch it just dissolve into the universe. That's a really important thing to do because when you say, I choose differently and you eliminate those from your life, that's going to free you tremendously. There's many other things that you can do, but this is just one little thing you can do. So remember, after you've done that, to ask what you, what it is that you desire. And secondly, visualize what it is that you want and see it as already done. If you go through and take some notes on what it is, as I said, this is like a massive shift for you that's available for you. So here's what it is that I want to invite you to consider. I'm doing a year long program uh, and it's called Abundance Mastery. And there are only 10 spots available and it's almost full. If you know that you could be totally committed and you will go beyond your box to be able to really have the life of abundance mastery and learn how the energy of money works and learn how to create the way you would really love to create, then I'm encouraging you to private message me and come and talk to me about this. And it, it has been that it's exclusive to people that have done a retreat with me, but I have found a way to make it work. If you feel that desire, you feel that passion and you know this is for you, you just feel something inside of you, then you private message me and we'll talk about how we can prep you to be prepared for this advanced work. It will totally and completely change your life and your money conversation, and your receivership conversation, and your health conversation, and your child rearing conversation, and every other conversation that you have going inside your head. So private message me. And for your question today, it's going to be, what would it take for me to allow myself to receive it all? What would it take for me to be able to receive 
Perhaps you want to just leave off the all because that might be too big of a press. But what if you allowed yourself to receive? I have really enjoyed having this little moment with you. And until next time, know that these things, if you follow through and find the passion and commitment, will absolutely change everything for you. And until then, feel a hug.